So when I first started this video series on what the Bible says about music, I was all, gray areas? What gray areas? There are no gray areas in music when it comes to the Bible. I stand corrected. There are, and let's discuss them today. But before we discuss those gray areas, let's just review a little bit about the videos that I have already covered in this topic. These are some black and white lines that you can see and you can draw. Number one, separate yourself from music. I'm not talking about lyrics, music that draws demons and those evil spirits into your life and your spirit world. Number two, separate yourself from an evil tree that bears bad fruit. Number three, separate yourself from lyrics that are contrary to God's word and God's purpose for music. And number four, da -da 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 -da, gray areas. The first gray area is that of neutral lyrics or they are of neutral lyrics and neutral music. When I think about happy birthday, those are neutral lyrics. They don't speak of sin or encourage you into sin, and they don't speak of the Lord and all of the things of the Lord, but they're neutral. It's just like everyday conversation. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing fine. Where, how was work? Well, it was long and boring. And those are neutral conversations. And God said that he will judge every idle word that we speak. And so that is where you look and you say, would they be a reproach to God's name? And if they're not, they're just neutral. I consider that junk food. If all you ever do is talk about sports or talk about your favorite game or talk about makeup, you become a shallow person who lacks depth. We do need that spiritual edification in our conversation where we provoke one another to good works and we encourage each other in the Lord. And that's where that speaking to yourselves in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, where that all comes together. And we do need that. And we need that more than we need their neutral music. If that's the music that you're drawn to every day, I would check yourself because it's like eating at McDonald's every day. You're going to become malnourished. So that's in regards to lyrics, but then you look at music, but then you look at the music, like classical music. There have been studies on the negative effects of classical music. There literally have been no negative side effects to traditional classical music. Now that's not necessarily true for more contemporary classical music or dissonant classical music, which has, a, you just have to listen to di what dissonant classical music is, it's kind of creepy. Those types of things actually have had negative effects, but those traditional styles of classical music have not had any negative effects in the culture around it. And so the music in and of itself is neutral. And that goes back to the same thing. If all you're doing is listening to neutral music, I would encourage you to see that imbalance and go and find songs that are edifying to God and where the lyrics speak of God and worship God and are admonishing and have a specific purpose because you need that in your life. Now the second gray area is that when the song in and of itself, there's nothing wrong about it. But I'm going to go into Romans 14 where it talks about being a stumbling block and how there are some issues that Paul says are just not unclean. But the way that somebody perceives them, whether because of their culture or their background, they, to them, it is a stumbling block. I think about yoga and how there are some stretches that if you didn't know they were yoga poses, they would just have the natural effect of that pose and that stretch. But if you knew that it was a yoga pose and you were entrenched in that lifestyle and the chakras and the, and the new age and the third eye, you would not be able to do that stretch without relating it to that old world and the sin and the idolatry. And that becomes a stumbling block. And you would never, never encourage somebody from that background to join you in yoga because it would be a stumbling block to them. And if you cause somebody to stumble, then that is a sin that God holds you accountable for. 
the other area where there's nothing wrong with the song in and of itself, but it can become wrong, is when your church has a corporate stand on something. You know, churches have lots of corporate stands. It could be on dress standards, you know, when you go to camp, or dress standards for people who are serving in ministries, that the leadership has a different standard than everybody else in the church, and that's fine. Or a standard about what music is allowed to be sung on their pulpit. And that is a corporate stand. And that is because the direction of the pastor is pointed one way. And they have a lot of things on their plate. They might know who has a weaker conscience in that auditorium or in that congregation. And so what they've done is they said, you know what, well, this is gonna this is gonna be a stumbling block and this is gonna be a stumbling block and this is gonna be a stumbling block. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go above reproach and we're just gonna set the line here so that we can minister to all of these people without causing grief or discouragement or their conscience to be grieved because of their past. That is the prerogative of the church leadership. And if we, as ministers to that church and that leadership, say, you know what, I, I disagree. I disagree with what they're going to do, and this is the music that ministers to me. And so if I'm going to sing, I'm going to sing what ministers to me. And we subvert the corporate stand, it becomes a sin. And God will not honor that. The last gray area of music isn't about a stumbling block per se in the area of sinning against your conscience or causing somebody to sin against their conscience. This is the area of where you can cause someone to go astray. And in Romans 16, God says that he would prefer us to stay simple concerning that which is evil and wise towards that which is good. God talks a lot about the simple man. The wise man will foresee the evil and hide himself, but the simple pass on are, and are punished. In Romans 16, 8 again, it says that, that many will be deceived through good words and fair speeches, and the simple will be led astray. And so this gray area is where I'm talking to you, those who have discernment and who can see the difference between a song that in and of itself, there's nothing wrong with it, and yet the influence in, a, in the world that surround it and the wealth from which it is drawn. And I'm asking you to look and say, what disservice as a Christian are you doing to the simple one? Because everybody is following somebody. You are an influence to somebody and your life, the bigger the influence, the greater responsibility you have to God and those around you. And so when you sing a song or you promote a song on Instagram or social media, whatever it is, whatever, if you're listening to music in the car and somebody says, oh, I really like that song. That was beautiful. I'm going to go look it up on YouTube. And then they look it up and they say, oh, that's by so-and-so. And then they go to so-and-so's iTunes page and they just listen to the whole album and they say, well, this person is a good Christian person. I know they're a good Christian person. So it must be okay. And what you did is that you might have drawn one thing out of an evil well, picked the one little nugget that was good, but you just cast somebody else into the draught of poison that that well is. And so consider the source and their doctrine and their spiritual understanding. I think of this one very popular singing singer this year who you know was an uplifting singer and I watched people that I knew, independent, fundamental, King James Bible-believing Baptists, I started watching their doctrine change, where anything that had to do with separation became coined as religion. And anything that, and anything that rebuked sin became pharisaical or legalistic. And I just thought, that's really interesting. And then I watched what music they were promoting and I thought oh I wonder who that singer is and then I looked and I saw the doctrine and the lifestyle of that singer and and that singer promoted homosexuality and and be careful be careful who you listen to and be careful who you promote because you might perceive yourself to be wise but that doesn't mean that you can't also be led astray by the seducing spirits God says that this is it's strong during this season during the end times because one of their songs, just one of their songs, might not be bad. 
maybe two of them, but what if 50 of them are? And yet you really like their style and you really like this about them. And I have seen so many people, so many families, so many good people completely change their doctrine. And they say, well, I used to believe this and I used to believe this and I used to stand up for this, but I'm just not like that anymore. Music is certainly spiritual. It is the language of the soul, and we ought to be extremely careful and extremely vigilant with something that speaks directly to your spirit. That's the end of my series. Have a great day.